Many youngsters come to me, Sheikh, why has this happened to me? Why am I facing so many troubles? Why is everything wrong? Whenever I sit, I sit for an exam, I fail in my exam. Whenever I want to propose, my proposal never gets accepted. I feel sorry for that guy, yeah? <laughs> and our deen teaches us that such feelings of inclination towards the opposite sex are natural. If you don't have this feeling, you're not a human, man. <laughs> what can be wrong here, however, is the importance we give to such feelings and the manner in which we fulfill them. Alhamdulillah, I have dealt with drugs. Not that I'm a drug dealer. Yeah? <laughs> Don't think I'm a drug dealer, man. Yeah. If we begin to find that we do not experience any regret after committing a sin and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is very worrying for me and you. Our desires are like a fire. If we use the wrong fuel or the wrong amount of fuel, then we will burn not only ourselves, but also those around us. Allah Akbar. The issue of discussion today is as you see on the screen and the posters that have been taken out it's an issue which affects each and every youngster and even adults in today's society and age growing up in the environment that we are growing up in these are some of the challenges that we face some of the challenges that we face in the society, in the environment that we live in. And because of these challenges, we go through many emotional, physical, spiritual challenges as well. All these changes that come in a person whilst they go from adolescence into adulthood, this change and this period of his life, where they are going from adolescence into adulthood, then they are facing these challenges which are living around, which are existing around them. They are facing these challenges by peer pressure. They are facing these challenges for the sake of being part of the culture or part of the society that we are living in. These challenges which we are facing on a day-to-day -day basis, is it really what we are looking for, for peace of mind? Are these challenges that we face and take up and lose with these challenges and forsake our Iman and faith, are we really going to achieve the tranquility of heart and the peace of mind? These challenges and these changes sometimes are hard to understand for me and you. They sometimes create confusion. Amongst the youngster, what is this change? Why am I feeling what I'm feeling? It's a frustration that a youngster goes through. Such feelings sometimes cause one to experiment and explore as one begins to try to carve out and recognize their individual identity. Who am I? Where do I belong to? Where do I come from? Who do I belong to? These identity crises have a major part to play for the environment and the challenges that we face. A person's identity is who a person is. A person's identity is a different topic altogether. I've given a lecture on identity crisis and maybe you have heard these lectures before. This is not the topic of discussion today. But I would like to mention here that we need to carve out and recognize our individual identity. For a Muslim, for a Muslim, the ability for oneself to recognize and understand oneself is a key step 
in maturing into a responsible adult. If we understand this phase of our life, of having to recognize where do I stand, where do I want to go, what is my goal, what do I want to achieve? If we understand that, we have made a great step forward for the success of our own selves. This is why a great Arabic proverb has been stated. Man arafa nafsahu, arafa rabbahu. Whosoever will recognize their self, they indeed will recognize their Lord, subhanAllah. Say la ilaha illallah, yeah? Whosoever will recognize themselves, if we know who you are, if we know who we are, if we understand our value as an individual, then we will be able to recognize our Lord. We will be able to recognize our responsibility towards not only our brethren, brethren, not only our Muslim fellow brothers and sisters, but we will also be able to understand our responsibility to humanity at large. To humanity at large. The responsibility which lies upon us as an individual to contribute to the society at large. We will only understand that if we understand who we are. Once we have this recognition of who am I, then we will be able to understand who our Lord is. Man arafa nafsahu, arafa rabbahu. In order to recognize ourselves, the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to understand that what does it really mean for me to be a Muslim? What does it mean for me to be a Muslim? Islam teaches that a young male and female, a young Muslim man and a young Muslim woman is the flag bearer of Islam. Today's society we see, many a times it comes in the news, it comes in the tabloids, they make certain individuals basically say that these people are representing a certain faith, a certain faith, a certain community, and people speak out and say, well, they don't represent us. Because what the media and what the tabloids do, they target someone, and they make that an issue. In the same way, a young Muslim has to understand that whatever actions they're going to be doing, it's going to have an immediate consequence on what that person is standing for. So a young Muslim man and a young Muslim woman, they have to understand that they are the flag bearers of Islam. Whatever they do will have an immediate effect on the society that they live in. If Muhammad does fraud in benefits, it will be Muhammad that does fraud in the benefits and Islam will get a bad name. If Muhammad is the one that goes out on Eid day and causes havocs, on the streets of London, or the streets of Manchester, or the streets of Blackburn, the town where I come from, then it's that Muhammad and Ahmad and Fatima and Zainab who is giving a bad name to Islam. Because Islam is not teaching that we cause disruption in the community that we live in. We are a peace, peaceful religion. We should be those who actually, actually uphold the rights of our neighbors, not disturb them not become a means of disturbance for the people that live around us. So we are the flag bearers of Islam. And throughout history, my brothers and sisters, elders, history will testify to the point that every young man and woman that contributed towards Islam make, made a recognition of themselves in the history of Islam. The people that bought the changes, that bought revolutions, were the very youngsters which understood who they are. Who understood who do they belong to? Who understood where, the, where are they going to? These very young people were the ones whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped and assisted. And Allah helped them, assisted them to go forward and to go forward and try and uphold the best way they can, the best way possible to try and bring a society which they live in, which is a peaceful society around the world. This is why the value of a youngster is so great in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
that through the blessed words of our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he states, Sab'atun yudilluhum allahu fi dhillihi, yawma la dhilla illa dhilluh. There are seven categories of people. And these seven categories of people are those whom Allah will grant them the shade of His throne on the day of judgment when there will be no other shade, subhanAllah. Eh? The sun will only be above the head and people will be drowning in their own sweat. On that day, our Lord, Allah Rabbul Izza, will grant these people, the seven categories of people, the shade of His arsh, and they will not feel any sweat, subhanAllah. Eh? Out of them, who is one? Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillahi azza wa jal. That young man, that young woman, who spent their youth in the worship of the Lord, subhanAllah. Eh? They didn't spend their youth in carnal desires. They didn't spend their youth in just trying to pass time and waste their life and not look forward for what responsibilities lie on their shoulders. But they spent time with some responsibility. They spent their youth in a way which was constructive. They spent their youth in a way which becomes a means of Islam and it becomes a means of not giving a bad name to Islam, but a means of giving a good name to Islam. La ilaha illallah. Yeah. So this is the responsibility which lies upon my shoulders as, and your shoulders as being youngsters in the society. I would still call myself a youngster, inshallah. Yeah? I don't seem old, do I? My wife, they should be saying, Yo, you're still young, yeah? Yeah. Ask her, I'm still young, inshallah. I'm still young in the heart as well, mashallah. Yeah? She knows well, yeah? Anyway, coming back to the issue. That if we were to assess our lives, then we will know that where are we going wrong? And the way we are going wrong is that our priorities are lying elsewhere. If we see the success of these young people in the past, you will see the success for these people was that they understood who their Lord was. They loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that they were ready to give their lives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They understood that we have got a responsibility on the face of this earth. And that is to try and pass on the message of peace in the society that we live in. <coughs> Sometimes as young people, it can be difficult for us to understand why certain things happen in a certain way. Many youngsters come to me, Sheikh, why has this happened to me? Why am I facing so many troubles? Why is everything wrong? Whenever I sit, I sit for an exam, I fail in my exam. Whenever I want to propose, my proposal never gets accepted. I feel sorry for that guy, yeah? <laughs> What's happening here? Why am I not getting things right in my life? I'm a bit confused, Sheikh. Give me some, something to pray, yeah? Give me a taweez, they say sometimes, yeah? Give me some kind of inscription, which is going to sort my life out. So do you know sort your life out? You gotta sort your life out by asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah? You gotta sort your life, you sort your life out by making sure you understand challenges will come. But you have to do you have to bear it with patience. Things will come in their own time. Allah will destiny what's best for you, inshallah, yeah? But you can't na'udhu billah, Allah protect us, may Allah uh, give, keep us in his protection. We can't start slandering our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is what he's done to me. Yeah, we can't do that. So many a time a youngster is frustrated and they don't understand why things are happening to them in, in, in such th certain ways. Sometimes a youngster feels restricted. Sheikh, always you people, whenever you give a talk, don't do this, don't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. So what do you think, what the hell are we living in this world for, yeah? What the hell are we living in this world for, yeah? Why have we come here? It's for world for enjoyment. Sheikh, don't worry man, just do toba man, that's it, yeah? Just do toba, that's the end of story man, yeah? Just enjoy life as it is, let life come as it wants, yeah? Just enjoy it when it's given life. You don't know when you're gonna die, we, we understand that message, but let's enjoy it while we've got it, yeah? Let's make, the be let's make the best out of it. But there are ways of making the best out of life. Inshallah, I will elaborate on that uh, in a few minutes, inshallah. So the underlying reason of thinking in this way that why is it that we are living like in a prison, but in a way, Rasulullah has said, Ad-dunya sijrul mu'min, wa jannatul kaf. That uh, this prison, this world, is a prison for a believer. What does it mean? 
that we have to live in this world with certain rules and regulation. If Mr. Patel, or Mr. John, or Mr. Smith, or Mr. Muhammad thinks that they can live in prison the way they want to live, they've got it wrong. Because in prison they've got certain rules and regulations. They're going to wake up at a certain time, they're going to do things at a certain time, they have to have a schedule that they have to follow. We have been also given a schedule. And the schedule is the Qur'an and Sunnah. The Qur'an and Sunnah. This is our manual, this is our way of life. If we follow that, Alhamdulillah, everything will be okay. But these restrictions are a mercy and a blessing for us, inshallah, in time to come. We can work towards understanding this simple concept in an example. I'd like to share with you. Sometimes your lecturer, your teacher will give you a task. That can you do this certain piece of work? But they give you no guidance. They give you no guidance at all. They just say do this piece of work. No direction. Nothing at all. Don't you think for that person to achieve that task would be difficult? Yes or no? I think you people are very clever, mashallah, yeah? You got no answer there, yeah? Don't you think it's going to be difficult? Yes or no? Yes. MashaAllah, that's better. And you got another person that they have been given a task, but at the same time the lecturer gives them some advice. They have been given some, the, the lecturer checks out the draft notes, he gives them some guidance and helps him so that he doesn't ha he become he doesn't become helpless and he avoids that person from falling into the pitfalls along the way of his preparing his thesis. Will that person be successful? Yes or no? So there's a difference. In the same way, Islam is a religion, is a way of life which supports the system and guideline of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is designed to assist us in gaining our objective, which is none but to gain the pleasure of Allah, and ultimately gain entry into, into Jannah, entry into paradise. That is our ultimate aim, that we in the next world are successful, and we get entry into Jannah, inshallah. The rules of Sharia are designed to help me and you from falling prey, to the tricks and the traps of our eternal enemy, which is none but the shaitan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is your open enemy. He is your open enemy. فَاتَّخِذُوهُ adua. Make him your enemy. If I was to say Fatima, or if I was to say Muhammad, this person is your enemy. Yeah? Stay away from him. Keep aware of him. Stay away from this person. Stay away. This guy is dangerous. This guy is evil. This guy has got some interior motives to harm you. Would you say, okay, well, Jazakallah, thank you very much, but I'm going to go and give a chocolate to that person, yeah? I'm going to give them, I'm going to share a nice chocolate. I'm going to give a bounty, yeah? Chocolate from paradise. That's what me and my wife always eat, mashallah, yeah? Bounty, yeah? So, we're going to share a bounty with our enemy, mashallah, yeah? Very good if you do. May God bless you for that, inshallah, yeah? But it doesn't happen normally. Person will be aware, will be taking heed. I've got to stay away from this guy, man. This guy is dangerous. This person, I've got to stay away from. Because they're going to harm me. Allah says to me and you, stay away from the shaitan. Because he is your adu wa mubina. He is your open enemy. And doesn't God know our enemies better than me and you know them? Yes or no? I need some interaction here. Yes or no? Yes. yes. God knows better because He is our manufacturer. He is the one that's manufactured all of us. Allah is our Khaliq. He is our creator. He exactly knows the way we think. He exactly knows the way we're going to do things. That's why He's told us, Oh, Ibn Adam, I am telling you, this thing, this shaitan, this creation of mine is your open enemy. Take it as your enemy. But know what does Abdullah want to do? Nah, man. I love the shaitan, mashallah. Yeah. I'm going to make my close friend, man. I'm going to listen to him the last thing I to sleep. Dum, 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 dum. Yeah. At night time, yeah. Not the dua, but the, the music in the ears. The first thing you want to wake up in the morning, 
is going to be the alarm with the music. The ringing tones, oh Allah subhanallah. And the mobiles, wow man. You're praying salah, Allahu Akbar. Imam saying, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. He's doing the Qur'an, reciting the holy verses of the holy Qur'an. Next thing you know, there's certain musical going on. Na'uzu Billah, Allah protect us in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haven't you faced that? Yes or no? Yes. Many times. Allah protect us, Ummah, even in Haram al Kaaba. Haram al Kaaba. You know, our holy Kaaba. People have gone so low, unfortunately, they are not recognizing what they're doing. You know, the Dawahs are doing the Tawaf. What's doing the Tawaf? You know, they, they're watching maybe the, the, the towers, the Zamzam Tower, whatever they want to call it, or they're taking pictures of the, the new tower which the Malik has built, the king has built, or what's doing Tawaf? The certain ringing tones coming on, and the Ajeeb, it's, 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 everybody is engrossed in, in a world of their own. But forgetting what the purpose of, why they've come there in the first place. Do we know, did we know of mobiles maybe 15, 20 years ago? No. Hardly anybody had one. Even then people used to survive, yes or no? Yes. Even then people used to communicate. I can remember, going back in my old days, yeah? <laughs> Don't want to give you my age out yet, yeah? Keeping a surprise, I'll ask you at the end, how old am I, yeah? And I'll see how, who gets it right. Except my wife, she can't answer here. <laughs> She is restricted to say anything today, yeah? So, people basically, they are spending their lives in a way which they are not realizing the real responsibility. And I was mentioning in regards to these ringing tones and everything, may Allah protect us, but brothers and sisters, let's be honest, you can get any fatwa from the batwa, yeah? If you know what batwa means, yeah? It means pocket fatwa, yes. So batwa means the pocket. You can get the fatwa from the batwa, from the pocket, yeah? I call them pocket fatwas, yeah? You can get pocket fatwas of saying, oh, this music is allowed and that music is allowed for reason, for putting ringing tones. But let's be serious. Istaf te nafsak. Ask your own heart. In your heart of hearts, do you really know that this is something wrong? You're not supposed to have this kind of ringing tone. Ringing tone, simple. You need, so you need to know somebody's ringing you. Whether you put it on vibration, whether you put it on a ringing tone, which is sufficient for you to know that somebody's trying to call you. But no, nowadays, they want to keep the latest music, yeah? On the ringing tone. They want to show, I'm up to date with everything, mashallah, yeah. yeah? Even the mashallah, our hijabi sister, mashallah, yeah? She wants to have the latest you know, musical tone on her phone as well. Why? She wants to show, I'm up to date as well. But let's be honest, these are all things which are there for the sake of informing a person that they want to, be, they want to get connected, they want to, get, uh, they want to be communicated to, and these means of communication can be adopted in the best way possible. So these means weren't there before, but people used to communicate with each other. Like I was saying a long time ago, I can remember that our parents used to do telegrams. I don't know if it still exists in today's day and age. There used to be telegrams, a means of passing a message on through the phone. There used to be, you know, when they used to pass this telegram, it used to go through maybe a certain time period, and they used to get a message through a telegram. Hajib. But nowadays, Allah has blessed us with all these easiness, and communication has become so easy for us today. Three hours ago, I was in Blackburn. Three hours later, I'm in London. Allah's fudal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's grace that He's made means of transport, means of communication easy for us. But these are there for us to appreciate the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For us to appreciate the bounties of our Lord. Coming back to the issue that Islam has given us certain rules and regulations. Shaitan is our open enemy. Whereas we have another one who is not an enemy in real sense, but it is our naive friend. Can anybody answer who that naive friend is? The nafs, mashallah. Our nafs and our soul is our naive friend. This naive friend of ours, sometimes shaitan uses it to get us in trouble, to put us into difficulties. 
Shaitan will try and make our nafs disobey the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the nafs wants is to experience pleasure. What does our nafs want? To experience pleasure. Now pleasure can be experienced through halal way. And pleasure can be ex experienced through haram way. Coming to the topic. Our nafs wants to experience pleasure. This pleasure Abdullah Abdul Rahman Fatima Zainab can be achieved by halal means and this pleasure can also be indulged into by haram means. May Allah protect us inshallah. This is what we find in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes oath upon oath upon oath in Surah to Shams. And further he says, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا Allah swears by the soul. And whenever Allah swears by the soul and takes an oath of anything, it is to give the importance of that issue. Allah swears by the fig. Allah swears by the olive. Allah swears by the day. Allah swears by the nights. Allah swears in many different forms and shapes. He swears by time. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Allah swears by the token of time. Indeed, mankind is in total loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالصَّبْرِ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ Except those who believe, who do righteous deeds, who encourage each other to stay on the truth, and who encourage each other also to be patient. These are the people who are successful, and who are not in loss. وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّهَا Our Lord says, He swears by the soul and by Him who formed it, subhanAllah. And who is this being Him? None but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah formed our nafs. And then He inspired the soul. وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا And then He inspired this soul towards goodness, and wickedness. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا Indeed, the successful is that one who has purified the soul. Subhanallah. Say, La ilaha illallah. Who has purified the soul. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا And indeed, the, the one who has failed is the one who has ruined his soul. So the soul plays a very important aspect in our lives. And amongst these things is that we feel strongly during our, this period of our age towards the members of the opposite sex. Our religion and our deen teaches us that such feelings of inclination towards the opposite sex are natural, are nothing against nature. They are natural feelings and that they are nothing to be embarrassed about. If you don't have this feeling, you're not a human man. <laughs> See, simple and straightforward. You gotta have these feelings to be a human. It's part of human nature to feel this kind of inclination. There is nothing wrong in having such feelings because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us in such a way that we are designed to experience such emotions. What, we, what can be wrong here, however, is the importance we give to such feelings and the manner in which we fulfill them. And the manner in which we fulfill them. Firstly, we need to realize that no one's desires are fulfilled totally in this world. Somebody will still have some hasra, some regret when they die, that certain, certain aspect of his desires were not fulfilled. Certain aspects of his desires were not fulfilled. So everybody's desire is never going to be fulfilled totally in this world. Do you agree with me, yes or no? People have many desires, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, this is that, but they never fulfill all the time. In fact, I'd like to share with you something at this juncture which just comes to my mind through the barakah of your presence. 
Like I went through one hadith. And one hadith came into my mind. And this is a word and the traditions of our Prophet Muhammad He mentions different categories of martyrs. There are two categories of martyrs. One is a martyr which is called Shaheed Dunyawi. The martyr of this world. One is a martyr which is called Shaheed Ukhrawi. The martyr in respect to the Akhirah. Now this person that dies, Al Matu'un Shaheed. A person who dies in a plague is a martyr. Because he has given, his life has gone not due to his own fault, but because a plague came and his life was taken away through a plague. A person who dies due to illness of his stomach, Al Mabutun, Shaheed. He's also Shaheed. He's died through the illness. And whilst I was reading that hadith, somebody made a comment. Ajeeb, gharib comments. Coming back to our desires, which sometimes never get fulfilled. And that is that, I was just explaining to my students two days ago, in regards to this as well. That it is mentioned, that a person sometimes desires that he wants to get married to this girl. Or a girl desires that she wants to get married to this boy. They both want to get married, but circumstances do not allow. Circumstances do not allow. For this boy to get married to this girl of his choice. For this girl to get married to the boy of his choice. Circumstances are such that further down the line, this girl gets married with somebody else, this boy gets married with somebody else, or they'll be off living a life. But in the heart of hearts, in the heart of hearts, he still got that desire, I hope I would have got married to her. Or she thinks, I hope I would have got married to him. She has this desire. Oh, he has this desire. And then they do not indulge in any haram activity. Remember, this is the condition. What is the condition? They don't start texting each other with the free text here. Yeah. Uh, and they don't start going on the chat, chat room and Twitter and become a twit. Yeah? <laughs> That's what they call it, don't you? A person who uses the Twitter is a twit. Is it, am I right? I might be wrong, I don't know, I'm not a university graduate anyway, yeah? So you can rectify me on that, yeah? So, don't become a tweet, yeah? By tweeting on the internet and trying to create a relationship. In the same way, you don't use any other means of communication, of trying to show this love of your, which you have in your heart and expressing this love to this person. Ulama state at this juncture. If somebody was to pass away with the desire, my wife's listening very carefully here, yeah? She only desired to get married to me, ask her, yeah? <laughs> Is there anything else, yeah? Be careful, yeah? I, I only desire to get married to her, she's lucky, yeah? <laughs> so now this desire is there, but the person actually passes away. But they are not able to fulfill that desire which they had in the heart because of circumstantial uh, 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 basically because of the circumstances not that unfortunately what happens in our society today unfortunately these uh, honor killings na'udhu billah min dhalla protectors totally against the teachings of Islam forced marriages got nothing to do with Islam <coughs> they nothing to do with Islam but people portray them as being part of the Muslim society and Islam. It's got nothing to do with Islam. Islam gives the total right for a woman to choose her partner. And that's a topic we can inshallah discuss at another time. Marriage in Islam inshallah. Yeah? I think this full will be room will be full up. And maybe you'll have people up at the top as well inshallah. <laughs> for the marriage of marriage. For the topic of marriage. You know that's so interesting. Even for a married man it's interesting. Subhanallah. <laughs> yeah? So, that is for another day inshallah. Another evening. Yeah? But this desire is there. The desire of wanting to get married to somebody, the ulama state, that if this person was to die in this condition, he will get the reward of a shaheed, because he has actually sacrificed his desire for the sake of? Allah. I can't hear you. For the sake of? Allah. Allah. Why? He didn't get indulged in any haram activity. He never took opportunity and trying to express this love to her or she never took an opportunity to express their love to him but they just had this in their heart but they passed away inshallah Allah will grant this person the reward of a martyr 
We've gone off from our topic, but I think we're still on the topic, alhamdulillah. Yeah? So sometimes desires are not fulfilled. I'm not, I'm not boring you, am I? Because I can see a few heads nodding, nodding off, mashallah. Maybe is it because of tiredness or is it because of I'm too boring? If I'm too boring, I'll say finish, inshallah. Yeah? You want me to finish? No? I've just started anyway. <laughs> I ain't going anywhere, inshallah. Yeah? Right, I'm going to finish my talk off, inshallah. My train is a bit later on, inshallah. I ain't going to miss my train. Yeah. Because I've got my daughter and my son waiting at home for us. Anyway, let's come back to the topic. Is that sometimes our feelings and our desires are not totally fulfilled. In this world, and if it is not possible for us truly to fulfill our desires in this world, then why should we aim to fulfill them? Why do something which we know we're not going to be able to achieve? Whatever we desire, where will we have? Tell me. In Jannah. Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُ Those people who say, who affirm, who believe in Allah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ Who say, our Lord is Allah, ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُ Then they are steadfast and firm. تَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَ The Malaik angels will come, and they will give them a glad tiding. أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوعَدُوا نحن أولياءكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعو Allah says for you will be whatever you desire whichever Fatima you will desire you will get inshallah you will get inshallah whatever you desire Allah will grant you in Jannah whatever you wish to eat whatever you wish you wish to have allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you that desire and there your desires will never be you will never wish for anything which is out of the bound of allah's pleasure alhamdulillah because our hearts will be purified our hearts will be purified before we enter into jannah so coming to the topic that a muslim understands that desires are natural urges that need to be fulfilled have we understood that issue, yeah? That these are natural urges which need to be fulfilled. But a Muslim does not become preoccupied with them and make them his objective of life. These things are not to be made objectives of your life because you ain't going to go anywhere by achieving these things. <laughs> our Sharia teaches us that we should not let our desires control us, but we should control our desires. My Habib Wasallam says, al kayis who is the intelligent one? Is it the professor? Is it the lecturer? Is it the one who just gives the lecture and we think, oh, they're very intelligent? Who is, what is the definition of the intelligent one? The definition of an intelligent is the one who has control over his nafs. Al Kayis Mandana Nafsahu. The intelligent is the one who controls his soul. Wa Amila Lima Bad al And he prepares and does actions which are gonna be beneficial for him in the here after. Wala Ajis and the insane and the ignorant is the one Manitaba Anafsahu Hawaha. وَتَمَنَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ وَفِي رِوَايَةِ وَتَمَنَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْأَمَانِي أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والتسليم And the ignorant is the one who follows the lust and desires of his nafs. He becomes the slave. He becomes the ghulam, abdul nafs. He becomes the slave of his carnal desire. He becomes the slave of his soul. And then he does what he wants to do without thinking of the consequences. Subhanallah. Without thinking of the consequences of his actions. That what am I doing? What am I doing? Where am I heading to? He's not thinking of the consequences of what that person is doing. Walajis man atba nafsahu hawaha wa tamanna ala Allah. And then he has hope in Allah that Allah is gonna forgive my sins. Allah give us the true guidance, inshaAllah. So firstly, like I said, we need to realize that one's desires are never fulfilled. Secondly, it is essential that we adopt the manner recommended by our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when fulfilling the demand of these feelings and attractions. 
Rasulullah s.a.w. says in a hadith, Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala is the narrator, he says, حُجِبَتِ النَّارُ بِالشَّهَوَاتِ Hellfire has been surrounded, covered. Hijab. Hijab means a cover. It's been covered by carnal desires. By vain desires. وَحُجِبَتِ الْجَنَّةِ بِالْمَكَالِهِ And Jannah, paradise, has been covered by difficulties. When a person will give difficulty, only after undertaking difficulty will he be able to enter Jannah. Only going through difficulty will he be able to enter Jannah. And if he indulges in vain desires, then indulging in vain desires will take that person into the hell. May God protect us, Allah protect us. Amin ya Rabbul Alameen. Yeah? So this is the criteria put down. Hujibatil naru bil shahawat wa hujibatil jannatu bil makare. Now we need to understand, am I fulfilling my call and desire? How much sacrifice am I giving to try and control my nafs and my soul? Shaitan will constantly, constantly try to entice me and you and encourage us by putting in front of us opportunity after opportunity to get indulged in sexual activities, to get indulged in drugs. Anybody taking drugs here? I take drugs. Anybody else? You take drugs as well? Parasita. I was just about to say that. Clever boy, mashallah. <laughs> Clever boy there, mashallah. Sisters, mashallah. There's a clever boy there. <laughs> <laughs> mashallah. Paracetamol. Panadol. Cocodamol. Are the drugs that we take. Is there anybody that takes ecstasy? Put your hand up here. Be honest. Allah knows best, yeah? Inshallah, put your hand up. People looking, no? Anybody that takes marijuana? Anybody that takes heroin? Alhamdulillah. See Alhamdulillah. Yeah? Alhamdulillah. See Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Because this is the fuzzle of Allah that we're not taking these things. Drugs is a big issue. Yes or no? Yes. The society that we're living in, our government doesn't know what they're doing. Whether it's the Labour government that was before, whether it's the coalition that's existing today, they are lost in their cause. They are looking at other things. But they are not looking at the core issue. And the core issue, which I feel because I've been involved in trying to assist people going off drug misuse. Alhamdulillah, I have dealt with druggies, not that I'm a drug dealer. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Don't think I'm a drug dealer, man. Yeah? I've dealt with them, I'm not a dealer. Yeah, it's a difference. Yeah? So I've dealt with druggies. Alhamdulillah, I can say, and mashallah, only through the grace of Allah did I be able to make them understand. It was not my excellence. It was only the grace of the Almighty. That they understood my message. I have actually, mashallah, there's a young girl that wants to say something, mashallah. Please come down and give me assistance, inshallah. So I can take a rest, inshallah. They don't even give me water, man. Give me my water bottle. It's over there, brother, inshallah. Allah bless you. Inshallah. Yeah, it's for me, yeah. No, don't throw it, man. <laughs> I can't catch. I'll be disgraced. Zakallah khair. Allah bless you, yeah? Sorry for the trouble anyway, yeah? It's all for a good cause anyway. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Normally when I go for speeches, I have a glass of water. But Daniel gave me a bottle of water. So you are to blame, yeah? For my voice squeaking now, yeah? Anyway, coming back to the issue, Daniel. That, I was mentioning that shaitan will constantly try to entice us to have, oh yeah, I was mentioning in regards to drugs. That drugs is such an issue that me and you understand how much harm it's doing to our society. It's killing the very fabric of our society. Could intelligent, intelligent Youngsters, young boys and girls, unfortunately, get involved with drug taking and they spoil their whole career. The whole career is jeopardized. Why? Because of them getting involved in drug misuse. 
So, we can't go into, I don't want to give you all statistics and bore you, but simple and straightforward, the fact of life is, drug is a big issue. It's got nothing to do with drug coming from other countries. We need to deal with the drug which is existing here. How much are we doing? We have to try our best to try and assist in trying to eradicate this pestilence which is stalking the Ummah today. This is a pestilence which is stalking the Ummah today. In any form or shape, we have to stop drug abuse because it is causing, the, it is causing uh, disputes within the very fabric of our society. May Allah protect us from this evil. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. So coming back to the issue, my brothers and sisters, that shaitan will try everything. He'll put opportunity on opportunity for us to commit a sin. What we need to remember on such occasions is that the disobedience of Allah may bring temporary pleasure. You've had a bit of fun. Come on, let's do it. Yeah? If you know what I'm trying to say, yeah? And then they say, let's do it. And now, billah, they do it. And they commit a sin. They've temporarily had some pleasure. But after the pleasure ends, they will experience nothing but regret and sorrow. If we begin to find that we do not experience any regret after committing a sin and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is very worrying for me and you. Something of great worry if we don't feel this. Because then that is a sign that our connection with our Lord is very, very, very weak. Our connections and our mobiles are very strong. Yeah? We have ringing tones which will tell us who is calling me. Subhanallah. Yeah? A special ringing tone for a special per person. Even the wife doesn't know who this person is. Yeah? Who's this ringing? Oh, he's just a school colleague, you know, mate from work, workmate. Na'uzu billah, could be somebody who is having an illicit relationship with. Allah protect us and Allah save us. So the, during this, this constant uh, challenges, we will be experiencing many, many new things. But something which is new and something that looks nice, just looks to be uh, pleasurable, is not always beneficial. Is not always beneficial. Something that might be pleasing for somebody temporarily is not always beneficial for that person. The desire that sometimes people experience are like anything else in life. If used in the right way, they will bring benefit. If, abu if abused, then it will be in the wrong channels and they will bring nothing but harm. Our desires are like a fire. Our desires are like a fire. I like this example. Our desires are like a fire. If we use the wrong fuel, or the wrong amount of fuel, then we will burn not only ourselves, but also those around us. Allahu Akbar. Yeah? We will not only burn ourselves, but we will also burn the people around us. So we need to appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this youth. And in our youth we may feel that there is nothing wrong with fulfilling our desire. But we should ask ourselves, is that how would we feel if someone was to use and abuse my near and dear one? How would I feel if I saw somebody was abusing my own sister? Or somebody was abusing my own uh, daughter? Or somebody was abusing my own brother? How would I feel? We should think of the consequences. The problem is, we are not thinking of the consequences of sinning. Allahu Akbar. A great hadith, time doesn't allow me to elaborate over the hadith. Mu'adh ibn Jabal mentions a lengthy hadith. It has been recorded by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad. And he mentions that Rasulullah SAW gave me advice of ten things. Awsani Rasulullah SAW bi ashri kalimatin. He says, لا تشرك بالله شيئا. وَإِنْ قُتِلْتَ وَحُرِقْتَ Allahu Akbar. لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَإِنْ قُتِلْتَ أَوْ حُرِّقْتَ He's never, as this, never associate partners with Allah, even if you are killed and burnt for that cause. All is believing, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Stay firm on that faith. Stay firm on that belief. Never ever associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Further, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions another uh, nasiha. He says, لا تتركنا صلاة مكتوبة متعمدا he says, O oh, Mu'az, make sure that you don't leave a compulsory prayer, even one salah. Salatan, maktubatan, on purpose, knowingly that you have to pray, silly don't pray. Yeah? In summer, we put our alarm clocks on. We say, right, I'm going to wake up 8 o'clock in the morning. Fajr namaz is 4 o'clock in the morning. Intentionally missing Fajr namaz. Allah Akbar. Yeah? A great sin. A great sin. La tatrukanna. My Habib says, do not leave one prayer on purpose. Faman taraka salatan maktubatan muta'amidan faqad bari'at minhu dhimmatullah. This person who will leave one prayer on purpose. Look at the consequence of Abdullah Abdul Rahman. Look at the consequence Fatima Zainab. The consequence of missing one prayer. On purpose is what? You will not remain in the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a great loss. فَقَدْ بَرِعَتْ مِنْهُ ذِمَّةُ اللَّهِ The protection of Allah will be lifted from this person. In fact, the muhaddisin and the mufassirin mention at this juncture, أَيْ لَا يَبْقَى فِي أَمْنٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ فِي الدُّنْيَا بِإِسْتِحْقَاقِ التَّعْزِيرِ وَالْمَلَامَ وَفِي الْعُقْبَى بِإِسْتِحْقَاقِ الْعُقُوبَى And they say, this person will not remain safe anymore. He will not be safe any longer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world by getting and being worthy of chastisement, being worthy of reproach and being worthy of rebuke, there is nothing for him to complain now. Because he's worthy of that now. Because he has left one prayer without any thinking of the consequence of missing that prayer on purpose. And in the akhirah, وَفِي الْأُقْبَى بِإِسْتِحْقَاقِ الْأُقُوبَى The punishment which Allah has reserved in the Akhirah. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to think of the consequences. Further in the hadith, same hadith, my Habib Wasallam says, he says, لَا تَشْرَبَ khamra. Do not have alcohol. Do not have alcohol. Alcohol, everything. Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab, he once gave a khutbah. Whilst giving a khutbah, he was talking not only on intoxications like like wine and everything. Everything that befogs the mind comes under the category of alcohol. He says in his khutbah, Al Khamru Ma Khamar al Akal. Khamar intoxication is that which befogs the mind, which befogs the mind, which controls your mind. Drugs take over your mind. In fact, some people have said that when a person takes drugs, this state of him, muqaddamatul iskar, he is in the state now of not becoming drunk, but before going into that state, this state is much more dangerous than being in the state of drunk itself. Allahu Akbar. It's muqaddamatul iskar, its consequences are even worse than being in the state of being drunkenness. Anyway, Umar ibn al-Khattab says, al khamru ma khamar al-aqal. Rasulullah sallallahu says, kullu muskir haram, Kullu muskir haram. Everything that intoxicates is haram. End of story. Drugs, amphetamines, heroin, marijuana, alcohol, wine, lager. Everything that intoxicates is haram in Islam. Ma askara qaliluhu. Ma askara kathiruhu. Fa qaliluhu haram. Our muhaddisin have mentioned whatever intoxicates in large amounts is haram in small amounts. So somebody can't say tomorrow, Shaykh, I don't get drunk very easily. No, I'm gonna have pop. Yeah, I'll go pop. Huh? And pop my mind out here. I'm gonna have alcohol pops. And I'm gonna have a few of them. I don't get drunk. I'm a few cans of lager. I don't get drunk. Ma askara kathiruhu faqaliluhu haram. Whatever intoxicates in large amounts is haram and forbidden in small amounts. This issue of drugs, I can talk for an hour. But I don't want to take your time much longer. All I'm saying is at this juncture, that these things are so... He gave advice, لا تشرب النخمرة Do not drink wine. فإنه رأس كل فهشة Because this is the root of all evil. This is the root 
of all evil. My Habib ﷺ further says, وَإِيَّاكَ وَالْمَعْصِيَةَ Save yourself from sinning. فَإِنَّ بِالْمَعْصِيَةِ حَلَّ سَخَطُ اللَّهِ For with the sinning, the consequence is that the wrath and the anger of Allah will come unto you. And we know the situation of the world today. Our government is now again, and we are seeing in the media, we might be looming into another recession. We might be looming into another recession. The consequences of the situation of the world today is because the sinning has become widespread. Allah Akbar. This is the consequence of sinning. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس. Today, turbulence has spread on the land and on the sea because of what actions Ibn Adam is doing on the face of this earth. Abdullah Abdul Rahman, Fatima Zainab, our Habib Salam said, إن الرجل لا يحرم الرزق بالذنب يصيبه. A man, a woman, when they commit a sin. When they commit a sin, Allah deprives them of sustenance, Allahu Akbar. Today, we are people cutbacks. We are people who have been slashed their salaries. We have so much situations taking place today on the, in today's society that we're living. And people have been going on. That person that was earning 25, 30K has unfortunately now has to go on to the unemployment benefit and job seekers allowance, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Today, they are not getting that same salary as they were getting before. Maybe this could be a challenge from Allah, that Allah is testing this person, or maybe it could be the consequence of that person's sin. A consequence of that person's sin. So the consequence of sinning has to, is an important issue. I hope inshallah, me and you will take heed from these things. Sometimes it seems that we're doing something, it doesn't hurt anybody's feeling. You know, we may fall into a relationship with, uh, with both sides saying, they find enjoyment in this relationship. There's no harm in that. What's wrong in that? We may feel that we are not doing anything wrong, as we both feel for each other. In such a situation, it is important to realize that lust is not the same. As love, yes. You want to ask what love means? Ask my love, inshallah. <laughs> Today, in days and age, everyone I'm in love. Sheikh, I'm in love, yeah? They don't know what love means. They want to use and abuse somebody. Na'uzu billah. They don't know what really love increases day by day. It's just lust and desire, which is the reality of today's society that we are living in. Shaitan, he beautifies these things and then he utilizes our desires and attractions to cloud over our minds this is why we should remember the hadith of rasulullah where he says another another the glance sahmun means sihame iblis it is from the arrows of iblis and shaitan if you save yourself Allah will give you halawatul iman. Allah will give you the sweetness of iman. And if you go the next step forward, after glancing somebody, oh, you know, Shaykh, it says that first glance is forgiven. So they say, oh, yeah, the first glance. I'm not blinked yet. <laughs> <laughs> the first glance is forgiven. So they want to endure the first glance. They want to make it longer. They say, what's up, Shaykh? The first glance is forgiven. But they don't really understand what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you do it by mistake. If suddenly your eyes goes on somebody who you're not supposed to see, and then you do keep on looking and staring at her and glaring at her, that's not permissible in Islam. In mu'minina yaguddu min absarihim. Tell the believing males to lower their sights. Waqulil mu'minati yaguddu min absarihinna. Tell the believing women also to lower their sight. She, oh, she's so beautiful. She's so, mashallah, beautiful. What a creation of Allah, mashallah. <laughs> that's what remarks people come out with. Shaykh. Allah says, فَأَرُونِي مَاذَا خَلَقُ اللَّهِ For look what Allah has created, you know? We're seeing the creation of Allah. What's your problem, Shaykh? Yeah, what's your problem? We are looking at the creation. MashaAllah! Yeah? And then the sister will say, MashaAllah, what a hunky guy, man, yeah? What a cool dude, yeah? If he's a dude, by the way, yeah? But now, this glance, this looking is not permissible in Islam. Allah says, the guidelines are there for me and you to take heed from. So what I was saying, we should think that in such relationships, if we have them, that we need to see that we do not see, uh, we, sometimes we have to understand 
that remember uh, in such relationships we don't usually see the full picture we don't see the full picture we generally only see the good things she's only showing you the good things you don't really know how she is yeah yeah you don't really know how she is you don't really know how he is he's only showed you his good side once he gets hold of you then you know what he likes yeah then you see the bad side of that person then you see the bad side of then you have regrets and you have disappointment and then you suffer but then it's too late then it's too late in order for me and you to keep our desires within healthy and healthy and limited means i would like to share three practical steps with you today number one we need to remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times he is our creator he is our nourisher he is our lord we need to keep this in our mind constantly that allah is my lord he is the one that is watching me and he is the one that loves me the most he is the one that has the best things for me reserved for me how can i disobey my lord secondly we need to adopt the company of the pious try and sit in good religious gatherings go to the scholars and the pious and take their company for company is a main aspect of a person going towards these kind of activities peer pressure friend circle the company al mar'u ala deen khalili rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says al mar'u ala deen khalili fal yanzu ahadukum man yukhalin a person is on the faith of his close friend look what kind of friendship who does he have friendship with who does he hang around with who does he hang around with sometimes people hang around with the wrong people the sheikh i'm hanging around with these guys you know because i want to make them straight yeah i said make sure you don't go bent man yeah <laughs> you want to make them straight make sure you don't go bent man yeah just make sure you hold your horses mate yeah make sure you don't get influenced by them you put your influence on them yeah alhamdulillah it's a good cause sometimes people can go into a night club and say come out and we might get these uh, wrong thoughts that oh this person has gone into a night club did they go for dancing did they go for this and that and the other but no maybe they went for a good cause maybe they went to explain to somebody that you shouldn't be here yeah so we can't always have suspicions and wrong thinking at all times i think i've been dragging on long enough sisters are going one by one i think i'm boring them the brothers are sitting seated mashallah so i think i know where i'm going to get my scores from inshallah eh? the brothers are more happy than the sisters but my wife's not going to go anyway inshallah don't worry she's going to go back with me inshallah yeah anyway second step is that we need to uh, take adopt the pious the company of the pious last but not least that if we do have the resources and we do have a relationship then the only halal way is to get married the only halal way is to get married the halal way ya ma'shar al-shabab man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata falyatazawwaj fa innahu aghaddu lil-basar wa ahsanu lil-farj wa man lam yastati fa'alayhi bis-sawm fa innahu lahu wija' aw kama qala alayhi as-salatu wa at-taslim o young man o young women whosoever has the capability capacity to bear the costs of a partner then they should get married this will be the best means of lowering the gaze best means of preserving their chastity and it will be the best form of aghaddu lil basar wa ahsan lil farj and whosoever doesn't have the means he can't support a partner then he should keep fast and the fasting of the sunnah not the fasting that me and you nowadays keep mashallah yeah in sahri time a big feast mashallah yeah and at the time of iftari we lose count of how many items that in front of us mashallah and then you got the spices man yeah and they make you more spicy yeah you know what i mean the spices are not good for you all the time yeah too many spices after a person has some drink what they go they go for a curry yeah because they want to go for the curry with and they have a vindaloo yeah and i hear this vin is is it tasty before <laughs> huh vindaloo i hear is very very hot has anybody had vindaloo before you must have visited the toilet then yeah <laughs> did you ah sakrali yeah i'm not wrong vindaloo is a hot curry so they go for a vindaloo and then they go to the loo yeah <laughs> that's what they have to do yeah so in the real sense we have to be consistent in our endeavor if we are fasting then we have to fast according to the sharia concluding the talk of today we are faced with many temptations and challenges brothers and sisters we have to remember in our minds that god is there allah is there it's not for me and you to say it's okay for me to do this it's not okay 
for me and you to fulfill the carnal desires. I'll enjoy myself now and I'll repent later like I said. It's no good for me to you, for me and you to say this. Allah is most merciful. He'll forgive me anyway. I'll say, Ya Allah, Toba Toba Allah Allah. Yeah? It's gonna be, it's gonna be, you might not get the chance to repent. You might not get the chance to repent. Allah has given me and you the opportunity to repent. So let's repent before the time goes away from our hands. Our Sharia teaches us that a person will be resurrected in the state that they die. If we unfortunately die in the state when we are disobeying Allah, na'uzu billah, Allah protect us, a person will be resurrected in that state. We hope that we die in the state when we are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah grant us the death in Madinatul Munawwara inshallah. Yeah? May He grant us the Jannatul Baqi as our everlasting abode there, our grave there inshallah. So therefore, we need to take these steps to try and understand that we do have these desires, they are within the Sharia, but we need to remember we are all humans, we will make mistakes, and there's nobody who is ma'asum, who is sinless, except the Prophet ta'ala. Prophets don't sin, me and you can sin. We are humans, we make mistakes. If we slip, we have got the option of tawbah. We have got the option of repentance. Immediately, we need to turn to Allah and ask for forgiveness of our sins. Make every effort to refrain from temptations. We should make dua to Allah to keep us in His protection, inshallah. Yeah? If we are faced, and Allah definitely will help us, we are faced sometimes with challenges, but if we ask Allah's help, inshallah, Allah will most definitely assist us. Have we forgotten the story of Yusuf alayhi salam? Have we forgotten the story of Yusuf alayhi salam? Inshallah, lessons will be given to you. Tafsir, they say, will take place of Tafsir of Surah Yusuf. It's not a love story, brothers and sisters. It's nothing about a love story. There are lessons to be learned from Surah Yusuf. One of the surahs of the Quran, which has plentiful lessons. In fact, at one occasion, Alhamdulillah, Allah grant me the opportunity, and I discussed over 40 benefits of Surah Yusuf, Alhamdulillah. And the whole conclusion of Surah Yusuf is in one verse. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَى إِنَّهُ مَن يَتَّقِي وَيَصْبِرْ إِنَّهُ The Mufassirin say, the whole conclusion of Surah Yusuf is in one portion of this ayat. إِنَّهُ مَن يَتَّقِي وَيَصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Whosoever will have taqwa and God fearness, whosoever will God consciousness and be patient, for definitely Allah will not waste the effort of the good doers. All the life of Yusuf is in front of us. Zalaikha tried to seduce him. Yes or no? And Zalaikha was not an old bag woman. No. She was a beautiful young woman. She was a young woman who had beauty. She was the wife of Aziz Misr. She was the wife of a merchant. She had beauty. But she was just miss, you know, a woman. She says she's beautiful. And nobody is attracted towards her. That is the biggest defeat for her. Yeah? Why isn't he looking at me for, yeah? Why, why am I not getting their attention for? This is the biggest disgrace for a woman if somebody doesn't give her the, you know, the appreciation of her beauty. Zulaikha was faced with a situation. She tried to seduce Yusuf salam, and Yusuf salam gave a blind eye to her. She tried to seduce him to the best of her ability. She put him into the most secured place of her mansion. But Allah Ta'ala opened the ways for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the ways for him. And the beautiful story inshallah you will learn in the tafsir of Surah Yusuf inshallah. But I'm trying to say, Zalaikha tried to seduce him. What was the end result? The Mu'arrikheen and the historians say, in the end, Allah brought Zulaikha into his marriage in the halal way. Subhanallah. Yeah? Allah brought Zulaikha into the marriage of Yusuf alayhi salam. He actually got married to her. It is written in the books of history, Hazrat Yusuf salam got married to her at a later time in his life. That means that she must have still had God. And at that time there was no issue of a differentiation of age. Like I said, marriage is a different issue or topic to discuss. But differentiation of age was not an issue at that time. Yusuf salam got married to her, but Allah protected her. I just like to share one dua with you, which will be beneficial. And I hope you remember this dua. Rasulullah, the ulama have said that we should pray this dua whenever we face ourselves, face 
a situation and a challenge. I'd like to leave by this dua. And the dua is that Allahumma tahir qalbi. Repeat it for me, please. Allahumma tahir qalbi. When you face with a situation, you've gonna basically nauzubillah commit a sin, or your eyes are gonna commit a sin. Whatever situation you face, you read this dua. Oh Allah, purify my heart. Allahumma tahir qalbi wa hassin farji. Oh Allah, purify my heart and protect my chastity. Protect my chastity. And blow on your heart like this. On your heart. Insha'Allah, the ulama say, if you read this dua, Allah will protect you insha'Allah. Yeah? Allah will protect you. And all these temptations and challenges will insha'Allah be nothing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may He make us His obedient service through His grace. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. And may He make us, uh, make us uh, worship Him to the best of our ability, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us those the tawfiq to act upon what has been said and heard, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me the proper understanding of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Islam, and may He grant us the opportunity to meet again for the sake of His, for the sake of his deen, and may He also give us the opportunity to partake whatever we learned to others as well, and to share the message with others as well, for Islam is a religion which is not only reserved for the Muslim community, but it is for the whole of mankind, for this whole of mankind and we should share this beautiful message of Islam to the whole of mankind for Islam will give us peace and security. Islam is not a religion of terrorism or barbarism. Islam has got nothing to do with it. We've got no relationship with that. Islam is a beautiful religion which is existing for the betterment of mankind. May Allah Ta'ala make us true followers of the true deen of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ameen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. I accept you to say Ameen inshallah. Ameen Ya Rabbal Alameen. Wa ma alayna illa al وصلى الله على النبي الكريم سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك وصلى الله على النبي الكريم فجزاكم الله خيرا أحسن الجزاء في الدارين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته